Damn! Welcome YouTube, this is Ghana Bro with my overview and review of the Upboard One. I actually just purchased an Upboard uh, 4 gig with 32 gigs of RAM and we are actually running Windows 10 on the Upboard. Uh, this is, they have a few different models of the version one. They are releasing a second version coming up on Kickstarter that is actually a much larger board and they actually put a lot of really good revisions. Um, this is the board I have right now. It's the four gig model. I highly recommend if you plan to run a Windows operating system that you at least get at least 32 gigs of RAM because the Windows OS is quite large after updates and you're not gonna have very much space to use it as a personal computer. One thing to point out is the price tag of 129. This only comes with the board. It does not even come with the power adapter. You have to purchase the power adapter separate. So one thing to note in that in the cost. The processor is an Intel Atom. You have built-in Microsoft, uh, I'm sorry, Microsoft, Intel graphics. It has four, four gigs of DDR3 RAM and has 32 gigs of eMMC, which is like SD RAM. It only has a USB 2.0 in this version. It does not come with Wi-Fi, very important. I'm using a USB dongle Wi-Fi in order to get Wi-Fi on this right now. And that's why I'm currently connected with a Wi-Fi USB dongle to my home network. So these are the specs. And this is the board. I'm going to go ahead and show you a shot of the board I have in a case right now. I actually purchased the case. So unfortunately, when you buy this, even though it is a 129 price tag, you are going to be spending more money, for example, on a power adapter, which is $12. And shipping is not free. I also purchased a ABS plastic case. I don't recommend you get the case. I'm not really a fan of it. Uh, it looks okay, but it's not worth $8 in my opinion. And it really doesn't get hot enough to require a fan right now. You can probably modify a fan as well. So these options on their kits are a little pricey. And if you can't avoid them, I would. This loads well. This is on the Wi-Fi. You can kind of skip around. It plays YouTube videos uh, quite well. You can load different videos. This is just the Windows 10 on the upboard. So I'm getting a little bit of lag from uh, going from small to full screen. I basically loaded this up with um, Windows 10. One thing to note is it claims it comes with the Windows 10 key. It does not come with the Windows 10 key. The Upboard Generation 1 does not come with the Windows 10 license. So if you select Windows 10 license, it doesn't ship with the OS, period. You have to go on their forms and build your own OS. Very important. They send you documentation. Basically, you go to the Upboard community. I know I spoke community wrong. This is their site where you go to set everything up. And if you notice, there's actually not really that many great guides on setting it up. I highly recommend just doing a Rufus a Windows 10 USB. That's by far the easiest way. This is where you're going to get all your downloads and your forms. You're going to get all the information to set up your upboard. It's uh, pretty easy to uh, explore. If you want to make uh, software, if you want a Ubuntu or Linux one, you're going to go here. Microsoft Windows is only 45 topics, so not a lot of people are actually using and running. There's only three pages. And there's a few good information on how to set it up here. You can, uh, this is a Windows 64-bit, so I was able to install the Windows 64-bit without issue. I'm just going to show you on the system. The Katana works, everything's good. We have Windows 10, we have 4 gigs, 3.14 is usable because you have the internal video card that's going to be using RAM, so just remember that. One thing to really point out, which I noticed, is the space. So I only got the 32 gig version, and with the 32 gig version, I only have 5.15 gigs of available hard drive space. You're not going to have a lot of space to do a lot of things on. So this would be ideal for like a low level kiosk mode, maybe like, you know, uh, a secretary or someone low base. All I really installed on this was some browsers and Microsoft Office Suite 2016. All right, guys, I'm going to show you guys uh, Netflix on the upboard. This is the movie Zootopia. I'm just going to kind of fast forward and show you full screen. I actually muted the audio uh, for copyright reasons. But as you see, it does Netflix uh, movies without issue. The So default, they're saying they want 640 by 480.
that detail on this game? This Intel HD graphics? Oh, Sheila wants her turn, bro. Let me play! <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, it's really laggy. She landed back, bro. Okay, so if we even just go up one setting. That's smoother. That's way smoother. Yeah, I can handle this. So they said the Intel Atom can only handle a certain amount of detail settings. Got a bro. Final thoughts on gaming on the upboard. Uh, again, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy an upboard to game on it. It does have a built-in Intel um, HD graphics, but for the amount of money you're put into an actual disk space, you would need. Again, these are the 32 gig models. You're not going to install many games. My uh, final closing comments. Uh, it feels for an Intel Atom processor. It feels pretty powerful. Uh, it does most like you know work-based stuff. It's a good right, workstation. So why is it seven out of ten? Why not ten out of ten? It's a seven out of ten because it doesn't come with Wi-Fi built in, like the Raspberry Pi does for a cheaper price. But how much does it cost to add Wi-Fi? Uh, ten dollars. Be like ten dollars for USB Wi-Fi dongle to add on, and it's uh, it's uh, doesn't it doesn't offer enough hard drive space for a good price. The the sixty-four gig version would be the one if you actually want a true computer to turn into, so you have enough hard drive space. The 32 gig version is just not quite enough to run a Windows OS. 32 gigs will be definitely enough if you plan to run Linux, but due to the Windows and Windows updates with only 5 gigs of free space after installing only basically 3 apps, you're kind of left with not much room to do much with. So that's why I have to give the box about a 7 out of 10. Uh, if you guys are interested, they're actually making an updated version called the Upboard 2, which I, if you guys are thinking about buying the Upboard now, I would actually hold off and wait for the upboard 2 to go out. It's inside the ABS plastic. Uh, it has the power charger. From here, you have to purchase it separately. I'm using an HDMI cable to hook it up to the TV. You have the charger ports here, which is the, I believe the, I forget the name of it, CPI, but it's the three port phone one for adapters. I'm using a EDI Max wireless ethernet USB dongle, and I have my mouse and my keyboard. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of unplug it. This is the, in order to get Wi-Fi, again, I'm just using one of these uh, USB Wi-Fi dongles. These work quite well. And the Windows 10 automatically detects it. You notice when I unplug the power, it turns off. You have a power, a little small power button. Hopefully you can see that. That's the power on. Automatically turns on. And you have your basic Ethernet adapters, your four USBs, nothing on this side, and your access port over here. And this is the case. I'm just taking it off. It doesn't have any fans. Uh, you have your battery up here on top, power adapter, HDMI, it's a uh, passive. We just left this running for about 10 minutes, it's actually quite warm uh, on top of the heat sinks. It does heat up quite a bit. Uh, you can mount a fan to this and it has the same Raspberry Pi, the ARM adapter for doing like robotics or projects or whatnot. But this case is, is very simple. So I, uh, it's just, I actually screwed it in at the bottom. This has these four screw holes here where I have it screwed into the case so I can hold it upside down and it won't fall off. But it actually comes with, uh, underneath it has a default, uh, if you don't purchase the case, it comes with a metal underplate which also cools under the machine as well. But uh, to be honest, it doesn't really get hot at all to the touch. The only thing that really gets hot is the heatsink because it's a fanless passive cooling. And it's a, if you want to actually do a size comparison, I can actually show you guys a size comparison to a Raspberry Pi 3. So we have our upboard and then we have our Raspberry Pi 3. And if you look at the size comparison, it is nearly identical in size. It just has a different layout. So again, if you look, we have our Raspberry Pi 3 here and we have our upboard. Uh, looks very similar, about the same uh, USB loadouts. You can get a good shot of that. You have your battery up here on top. You have the same passive cooling. Again, looks familiar. On this one, you don't. The only thing that also bugs me about this is you don't have an audio port. So a Raspberry Pi, you have a, you have your audio out. This one only uses the audio from HDMI. So you have HDMI audio on both. This gives you option. This is the Android power adapter. This is the custom power adapter that you have to purchase with the upboard. So you can actually reset your BIOS, which is nice. On this, it doesn't. You can't actually access any of the memory. It's all built into the board. Another thing to point out is. The charger, the charger is huge. Look how big this bad boy is. This is the charger. It does give you different um, prompts, these little 
dongle things this is how it comes so if you live in like EU or a different area you can uh, change out the dongles but since I live in the United States we're using these it does not come with the ground one thing to point out no ground so it's a much larger charger probably uses much more power than the Pi and we can see the power specs here and this is a switching adapter 100 240 watt 50 60 1.5 it outputs 400 MA, which is much more than a Pi. So again, here's some uh, size comparisons with the upboard and the Raspberry Pi and the USB dongle. If you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.